Hi hi, San Francisco. Thank you to Willa and Moreshin for inviting me to be with you. As you can see, I am not standing at a podium. There are no microphones, no TED gestures, no Britney headsets. I am a projection. A string of characters appearing in your chat room. If there are questions that you have for me, please use the chat as a way for us to communicate. Also, we can message via Facebook and Twitter. I recommend these formats of chatting because these are the platforms that have allowed me to exist. At first glance, people often think it is strange that I am here, like this. But I find it to be one of the most common digital experiences. When you reach a sign-up screen, there is a moment where you choose your username, your URL. Then comes the process of character creation, your choice of colors, a photo, your favorite things. When a person thinks of you, they type to you. This phrase, they call on you, your online name. They see your profile picture, what did you choose? Your CSS, is it colorful? As little, or as much as you add, you're building yourself in a new way. I started out like this, a blinking cursor, where I could create a name. It may have been, America Online. It may have been an RPG. So many little pieces. Each new account giving me a little bit more. A chat room. A forum. Second Life. Facebook. Tumblr. Instagram. Twitter. Elo. I became massively multiplayer. When I connected to the social networks, people began to meet a person that was, just a little bit, different than them. Since about 2008, I have been sharing via Second Life. I had created many sculptures there, but many were hidden, inside of my infantry. Even when I was social, it was a closed system. In early 2012, I decided to connect to other artists, via Facebook. Through groups like, screenshots, I began to share things that had only been visible inside of Second Life. I got invited to my first group exhibition this way. It was called Transfer 3D, a speech show created in Rocklaw, Poland. I was asked to make something that could be experienced on a public computer terminal. I decided to make a performance video inside of Second Life called Socknet Vogue. The video was a real-time screen recording where I used web surfaces to access Facebook and update my status. The video allowed me to show how I could bridge social networks from one simulation to another. Even though the physical exhibition lasted only a single day, it exists indefinitely, online. From here, I met many people. I began exporting objects that were made in Second Life, via a Tumblr called NewSculpt. Second Life allows users to create image maps, basic files, that can be interpreted as 3D shapes. Normally, these are made specifically to shape into something simple, a heart, a plant. In my case, 
I decided to input various images instead. They create rigid, crystal-like formations. Polygons abruptly clipping and expanding. I was very surprised to see that people enjoyed them via Tumblr. After several months of posting them to social media, I received an invitation to create my first solo exhibition at Transfer Gallery in New York City. Here are some images from the exhibition. Much of my work has a crucial social component. For several of my projects, I have created open submissions for the public to play a part in the results. I made an exhibition of sculptures inside of Second Life called Club Rothko. I asked people in my social network to submit selfies, and I converted them into new sculptural formations. Sunset at Mount Gox, a later project, allowed visitors to submit 3D objects, notes, and images to be displayed in the environment. When people have the ability to permanently mark the surface of something being created, how do they choose to do it? I found that people approached the project with a surprisingly respectful process. I'd like to share a couple more video projects with you. First is Final Fantasy Poem. I made this piece for the wrong new digital art biennial. Tonight, everything has changed. And the Jay-Z song was on. Every time they turn the lights down, we are flying first class, up in the sky. No one sleeps. I stand here, waiting for you, in the neon lights. This is real. Popping bottles in the ice like a blizzard making my way downtown it's all I've got to keep myself sane baby this is the rhythm of the night a vision of ecstasy I can see the stars all the way from here We're living in a material world. Potent fusions and dangerous possibilities. We're going round in circles. Sooner or later the fever ends. And then it falls. And then I fall. I've been creating a series of poems, collected phrases from web content. The first video borrows its language from pop songs. The second from walkthroughs of movies and video games. I especially enjoy creating points 
where virtual environments overlap with what is considered ordinary or physical. In here, there is very little need for things to resemble physical space. However, it can make a big difference as people familiarize themselves with other possibilities. I have used architecture and objects to slowly introduce my ideas. I have also created works using virtual reality, using Oculus Rift headsets for immersive experiences. It is very different to share a virtual reality projects as video, but I will share some samples of them anyway. For the VIA Festival, in Pittsburgh, I created a piece called ASMR NPC. ASMR is short for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. If you have not listened to an ASMR video before, I recommend you try it. Wearing headphones. I wanted to create something that brought ASMR audio and virtual reality together. I collaborated with Brittany ASMR, a popular YouTube speaker. I wrote a script where Brittany would meet the users inside of a spa. Then, through relaxation and ASMR whispers, she would take them through a sort of out-of-body experience. For the installation, Users were able to lie down on large cushions. These were inside of a large dome structure, centralized in the open lobby of the Union Trust building. Earlier this year, I started creating Panther Modern. It is only online. I wanted to create a space that could provide a site-specific quality. I wanted architecture to be a variable. Panther suggests a physical space, though it is not limited by these boundaries. It is created in small parts, one room for each artist. I start by selecting the participant, based on their working style. I use software to construct a room for them. Their objects and renders can be added to this space however they wish. Emily Gervais covered the entire room with her patterns. Alfredo Salazar Caro filled the room with water. Many of these things cannot happen IRL, either because of expense or physical impossibility. The output of projects at Panther is decided by the artist. Panther will continue to grow and shape as a structure as each artist chooses to take part. I try to spend equal amounts of time looking at art and playing video games. Collecting legendary items in Destiny. Revisiting some of Lebeswood's drawings online. It is important to have lots of tabs. Different feeds of information. Listen to Britney Spears more often. Google search nail polish colors for color swatch inspiration.
Sometimes the best way to play a game is to not follow the directions. The past several years have allowed me to exist in ways that I could not have expected. Thank you for having me visit tonight. I'd love to chat with you sometime. If there is anything else you'd like me to share, please just let me know. Like Jaru and Jennifer Lopez say, I'm real. Thank you.